Best is an actor who is fast becoming a TV institution from the brilliant life on Mars. It's Gene Hunt himself, Philip Glenister, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> hey, Philip. How are you? How are you? Nice ah, I, love, I love that kind of gene hunt, and of course, not content with inventing the no bruise groin slap in the 70s, Philip has now moved on the 80s in his new series Ashes to Ashes, where I'd imagine he will be busting people for crimes against fashion. I arrest you for the possession of rolled up jacket sleeves, shoulder pads, and espadrilles. Come this way, Mr. Ross. <laughs> Whatever you say, your show. You see, <laughs> I'm the master at putting people at ease before they come out. <laughs> Philip Dennis is on the show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and we also have, as always, it's time for my final guest, ladies and gentlemen. First, though, let's go back to 1973, where ladies were birds and ponces were nonces in the brilliant Life on Mars. Hey, uh, flat's clean. OK, Rocket. Who shot Deepak Gandhi? See... The problem is, I don't help the filth. Sorry, but I would rather have uh, rabid ferrets munch on my testicles. OK. Let me put it this way. <laughs> Who shot Deepak Gandhi? I've never heard of him. What happened to British workmanship? Come on. Someone else on your patch selling gear? Steady, Gov. We don't want another of those enquiries. Uh, I asked you, who shot Deepak Gandhi? I, d I don't know nothing. Uh, Ugandan lot, they, they keep themselves to themselves. If you know nothing about Deepak Gandhi, how do you know he's Ugandan? Uh, yeah, no, th that, that is a good question, actually. I'm glad, glad you asked me that. Um... <laughs> Will you please welcome Mr Philip Glenister? Good to have you here. What nice do you think of uh, Vivian and her? Uh, I'm just I'm joining her party. She's giving me a badge. It was quite something, wasn't it? Mayor, Mayor of London. What an inspirational Vivian. figure she is. Fantastic. Uh, now, part of me is delighted you're out here. Part of me is a bit disappointed that you didn't grab me, kick me in the nuts, throw me over the desk, and call me a soft southern bastard. Because <laughs> we all love Gene Hunt, and oh. uh, part of me wants you to be like that when when I meet you. Do you get that a lot when you go to pubs and out and about? No, I don't go out. You don't go out at all. Two small children. I'll go out. So you're at home, you're doing the daddy thing? Yeah. Okay, how old are your children? Six and three. So they're not watching Life on Mars? No. No, no. Or indeed the new one, Ashes to Ashes? No. Okay. But they've got this big poster in their bedroom. Of you? Yeah. That, and, uh, of the, from the show? Yeah. That from must be quite strange. What, and do, you, do they know what daddy does, I guess? They know you act. Well, funnily enough, my daughter, um, uh, a few weeks ago, she was, uh, she was out with, with Beth, uh, her mum, and uh, she just went up to this policewoman and just tugged on this policewoman's sort of leg. Yeah. I went, uh, my daddy, my daddy's a TV policeman. <laughs> and, uh, at which point Beth had to say, like, uh, he's, he's Gene Hunt in Life on Mars, at which point the woman said, oh, I just bought his book. I've got a book out, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so from that, she, I think she learns more about it from the, from the public than me. Um, it's a big hit, I believe, the, the series. And part of me is um, kind of, you know, not surprised. Part of me is a little worried. I believe the character of Gene Hunt and uh, the series was a big hit with the police. And that he'd become yeah. something of a pin-up in police stations. Yeah. And I guess part of us all like the idea of this kind of uncomplicated world that yeah. it represents. Yeah. The most common reaction I get from, from policemen is, is the fact that, you know, they all knew somebody that was a, a Gene Hunt back then. Or whether they, you know, there, there tends to be a lot of people in the family whose father or uncle was, was a policeman back then. So um, they all seem to know somebody that, were, that was actually, you know, they, they can't say that this bloke was Gene Hunt. Definitely Gene Hunt. Yeah. You know, they all seem to have had one in there. But he wasn't based on any one person in particular, of course, was he? No, not at all. I mean, when we were sort of doing the research, you know, that John was um, watching old episodes of The Sweeney. Yeah. And uh, I was watching uh, a DVD of Match the Day <laughs> from the <laughs> 1970s. Because I just wanted to see what the look was like yeah, yeah. Uh, from the crowd. So it was like up at Anfield and Ellen Road and Old Trafford and all that sort of thing. Uh, and just the sideys that were going on, you know, were yeah. extraordinary. And there was this moment with Brian Clough where he was being interviewed, and and uh, he, you know, he just held court with with this interviewer saying, "This interviewer, Mr. Clough." Yeah. And he said to him, um, "What uh, 
Mr. Clough, what happens when, when somebody, one of your staff or one of your players happens to, to disagree with you? And Brian Clough looked at him and like, good. He said, well, they come to me, we talk about it for 20 minutes, they realise that I was right all along, we move on. <laughs> and I kind of felt that that was the essence of sort of Gene within his... Uh, you know, his, his world. Yeah, that, he's uh, king in his little domain. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Cluffy is the main sort of... Uh, well, it was just it. that clip. It wasn't based on Brian yeah. Cluffy, but it was that kind of, also that kind of football manager of the time, kind of quite charismatic and larger than life, and they seem to be around quite a lot in the 70s. But you know, you said you were looking at the 70s the way people look back then, and you kind of have an old face, you know what I mean? It's not like, a, it's not like an old face. You don't look like you're old, but you look like your face is from a body from the 1970s. It, you don't see faces like yours walking around that much anymore, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Jesus, you've abused Daniel Craig, I'm not, I'm not. Craggy. <laughs> now I'm old. No, no, but you've got a face that looks like it comes from a different time, do you know what I'm saying? Well, that's alright. No, but you know, it's kind of, and it works for the character in that respect. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, that's why I do a lot of period drama. <laughs> it is, I suppose. Is that the case, you think? Is that why people come to you for that? I suppose so. I mean, it, it, it's... I'm quite happy with it. I think I've grown into my sort of looks, you know. I'm not saying you're not a handsome man, really. Philip. Please, don't take this the wrong way. Thanks. I know you're quite a pin-up in certain circles. Do you get a lot of lady interest because of the show? Um, you get a few sort of letters, um, you know, sort of bring the camel coat if you're ever in real. <laughs> but, uh, it's the thing, it's like with Helen Mirren, sir, when she said, you know, I think you've fallen in love with the Queen, not me. And it's the same with, with the character. Yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely not me, it's the character they seem to, to find. I mean, it's, it's fascinating, the fact that he, you'd think that being this sort of misogynistic, sort of overweight, sort of rather di dinosaur-type figure, that, that women would find him fairly repulsive. But, I mean, I could only think that it's maybe his, his lack of uh, self-awareness um, in, in an age which is so kind of... Image led. So people driven. checking themselves all the time and wondering about how they're being perceived. Well, thinking they should be like a particular person, and then this guy comes along and just throws out the rule book and just says, This is what I am, yeah. and this is what you should be, and get on with it. You know. Obviously, you're, you're, when you're playing that part, you get to do some of the things that most of us think look like a lot of fun. You get to drive the cars a little bit too yeah. fast, you get to shoot guns. Do you do your own stunts? Are you allowed to do the driving? Well, stuff the first it? series, I did quite a lot of it. Um, in Life and One, they just said, Can you drive? It's like, Yeah, all right, drive. And there's the cardboard boxes and just crash into them. I've always wanted to drive through cardboard boxes. I well, but what's the point like... of it? And the Sweeney, even. Yeah. You, know, you watch these clips and they're kind of coming around corners under these bridges and there's these just empty cardboard boxes. Well, yeah, they're there's never really... anybody in it or anything in them. <laughs> because they're there for them to drive through. Exactly. It's like a it fun day good. out. It yeah. is. Yeah. It is. Uh, is it fun to drive through cardboard boxes? Great. Okay. And then the second <laughs> series, we change boxes for bins. And they just yeah. put a bin, just says, right, come around the corner, hit the bin. And when it's not your car, you think, fuck, whatever. <laughs> you sort of the, poor, the poor sod that owned the Cortina, every, after every day's filming, you just had in hands, be going, oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, and yeah. does that driving skill, uh, when you're out there excited driving all day on a set, when you go home and you've got to drive the family somewhere, yeah. do you have to remind yourself that you're not in front of cameras now? Yeah.